So I just made a post on my Facebook this week about how good of a brassica year I'm having. Usually by this time of year, my brassicas are bolting or they have been shredded by the cabbage worms. Um, but this year they are doing so good and I'm really excited to actually see like heads of cabbage forming. I think it was 2016 was the last time that I actually had heads of cabbage in my home garden. That was the first garden I had here and we bought started plants. So for my plants that I started and I'm going to actually get cabbage, I'm really excited. Over here um, is mostly kohlrabi. Now I did pick a cabbage worm off a leaf yesterday that I noticed was getting eaten. So I think they're starting to uh, come out, but I'm checking the leaves. Ah, and this is a great indication of cabbage worm poop. So if you see that, there's probably a worm nearby. Not on that leaf. They like to hide on the underside of the plants. So you see that? That is a tiny little cabbage worm larva. And they get bigger. It'll turn into a big green bug. So I'm gonna squish it. Okay, that's it, it's gone. I'm not overly concerned with the cabbage worms at this point because my plants are in a pretty good state of reaching maturity, like these kohlrabi, where I'm going to be harvesting them soon. So even if the worms do come and start eating the leaves, it's not really gonna affect the actual kohlrabi, which is the part of the plant that I want. Um, you can eat the leaves of all the brassica plants. They can be tough. I don't necessarily prefer them, especially because I grow so many other leafy greens. I don't really need to eat the brassica leaves, so those usually just end up to the chickens. This is such a lovely little view right here of all the brassicas and the bolted cilantro and the bolted carrots. Look how tall those carrots are. Some excellent looking um, broccoli and Brussels sprout plant. I don't remember which is which. They all look pretty much the same. And I've got ground cherries popping up everywhere. My friend Ashley at Rivlo Acres did warn me that ground cherries are excellent volunteers and yes they are. <laughs> They're all coming back. Here's my heads of cabbage starting to form. It's so good. Yeah, Wakefield Jersey cabbage. It's a market variety of cabbage, so it's doing really well amongst the beet plant that's going to seed from last year. The fern and sunflower bed is like really starting to get going. I've got corn and melons in here and potatoes. Just everything is growing so fast. And speaking of things growing so fast is everything in my greenhouse is like, ah! <laughs> So maybe you can tell, I am five foot 10, so I am pretty tall. And this tomato plant behind me is already reaching my shoulder. And as an experiment, I planted beans in the front of them. Now that everything is going crazy, I have one bean plant that has just taken over the string for this tomato plant. Um, so it's just getting kind of wild. And I had thought I did only bush beans in here because that was my intent was just to do bush beans. But this one is obviously not a bush bean and it's just gonna reach the ceiling here pretty soon. But I am pumped to see how many fruits are already forming and like how big they are on these plants. The ground in this greenhouse is very fertile. 
um, because I keep my chickens in here over the winter. So the last two winters, the chickens have slept in this greenhouse and it's completely, it's not heated at all, um, but it stays warm enough in here for the chickens to be fine in the winter time. It acts mostly as a wind break and just kind of a dry place for them to hunker down and they all huddle up together um, at night and they keep themselves warm even through our coldest temperatures. Um, but because the chickens are in here for six months out of the year, um, they do go outside during that time too. They're not locked in here the whole time. But this has allowed for a very fertile space. And all the plants do really well in here and I don't even have to water them at this point. When they first get going um, and transplanted, I did water a little bit, but I learned last year that it wasn't really necessary for me to water. I had soaker hoses in here and everything set up to water these plants really well and I ended up not even using them after the first like two or three weeks. Um, so I just hand watered in here just to get everything established but the soil on this part of the garden is more damp anyways because I have it, my garden is on a slight slope um, so all the water kind of goes to this area of the garden and collects over here so it is pretty wet in here um, for the uh, during the off garden season right now it's fine but again the water just collects underground so all of the root systems of these plants just go deep into the ground and suck up the water and they are very very happy my pepper plants look amazing in here compared to the ones outside outside they are still kind of yellow and small um, but these ones are really starting to grow. I did have to apply diatomaceous earth on these because I have aphids in here. Um, and after applying the DE, it seemed that the aphids uh, are mostly under control, more so, and the plant started growing better. Although, I just noticed some aphids here. And this is a bag of lion's mane mushroom my friend David cultivated. I know nothing about mushrooms. I don't even really eat mushrooms ever. <laughs> I have eaten them. I don't mind them. It's just not something that I often eat. Um, but my friend David, he, um, he cultivates mushrooms. And so he has been doing lion's mane. So he gave me this a few days ago and we opened the bag and keep we're keeping it in the greenhouse to kind of see how it does in this environment and it definitely is growing so it's pretty cool and exciting to see uh what we're gonna get out of the lion's mane and i've never eaten that before i will try that um once they get big enough i feel like i am gardening in a cloud right now with how hazy and foggy it is we're like right in the cloud. <laughs> I planted a snake gourd along this trellis and only one seed germinated. I actually have put in, I think now five seeds, only one has germinated. So I really like my trellises to be very full. I like to have this whole tunnel behind me nice and full of plants. So that way it's just got that really cool tunnel effect. Walking through a wall of greens. <laughs> So I am going to be putting in some runner beans along this trellis here. So I'm gonna do the scarlet runner bean. I have some seeds left from a seed swap. And I'm gonna heavily sow these. On the other side, I'm gonna do these Cherokee Trail of Tear Beans. They are beautiful. And 
I just found some strawberries. I greatly appreciate a strawberry snack. So I've been trying to grow culantro, which is kind of similar to cilantro, but it's more of like a tropical climate kind of plant. And it tastes kind of similar to cilantro. It's used in a lot of Latin dishes. Um, so frito is one that I've heard so many people tell me like, if you grow culantro, I need to make sofrito with that um, and I actually found some sofrito at one of my local grocery stores in the frozen section and I tried it and it was amazing so I really hope that I can make it but I have had a really hard time getting these seeds to grow I started some in the house months ago and it took over three weeks for them to germinate um, which was really surprising because it was warm at that point. I left them in the pot, in the seed starting pot, to like try and grow before I transplanted them and they weren't having it. I even moved them out to my greenhouse where it was very warm and they still weren't growing and I don't really know why. So I sowed the rest of the seeds in one of my garden beds, just direct sowed them and I've been like waiting and waiting to see and it looks like a tiny little sprout is starting to come up but I'm... I'm starting to wonder if uh, culantro is just something that I'm not going to have very good success with, which stinks because I was really hoping to have that, but um, I haven't given up hope yet. It's hard for me to tell what is a weed in here and what is not, but I think this tiny little guy here is a culantro, and right here looks like one of the culantro seeds so that might be just starting to sprout the seeds are very tiny the sprouts are very tiny and i'm not familiar with it enough to know what it looks like at such an infantile stage so if you are from the south and you have grown culantro um please let me know if that is it <laughs> i need some encouragement that they're actually going to grow so the last thing on my list for some garden chores tonight is to get these plants that I purchased um, from a local store. They were 75% off perennial um, annual flowers and get them into these pots here over by my greenhouse. So I have this verbena, begonias, alyssum, wizard jade. Petunia, the bubblegum petunia, quartz pink verbena, uh, violet petunia, some blue arrow grass, and I also got a bunch of bulbs that were like a dollar each. So I need to get those in the ground, but I probably won't get these in today. Oh, and here is my future lavender farm. I winter sowed all of these in a milk jug and recently transplanted them to their own pot so they could actually grow. And this will be my future lavender farm, at least the start of it. This plant does not look great, but I think it'll come back. I just remembered I wanted to show you all our baby chicks. So I have hatched two rounds of chicks from eggs that we, our hens, laid. And 
We had our first hatch on May 3rd and our second hatch on June 3rd. Bah! <laughs> hey baby. Can you believe how big this boy's gotten? <sighs> You're so big. Little teenager now. Proud mama. So with our first hatch, we gave away um, more than half of them. Um, and then we had a ton of losses. We had 17 of our chickens killed of all ages and that was just really upsetting. I did a second round of eggs. I did 22 eggs and all 22 of them hatched, which was like amazing to see that success rate. But I wanted to show you the babies. So right after the second round of chicks hatched, uh, one of my hens went broody and <laughs> so we um, decided to give her a couple chicks. I gave her two chicks and then she didn't really like them. She was pecking at them a lot and I honestly thought that she would probably kill them. Um, but I thought I'm going to leave them for 24 hours. So then the next morning I go to check on them and she had taken to those chicks. Oh, little baby, you got lost. I was trying to catch it. That's why I thought I heard one crying. And so after she took those two chicks, I just kept slipping her more. Like every couple hours, I would give her like two or three more. Um, and eventually she uh, accepted all 22 chicks. So those are all her babies. So here are some of the ones that uh, we hatched on May 3rd. So they're a nice size now. Oh, you, you rescued it. Thanks. So here's mama. Oh, Look at that one. What? Oh, there's a little underneath. peed out the wing. There's one peeping in the wing? It was peeking out the wing. Hold on, let me see. It, it, it went away. It went away. Where'd it go, babe? It was peeking out the wing. Well, it's dark, but <laughs> they're in there. Put your head back in. <laughs> oh, there's the little one. So she keeps all 22 of them in here. So they're, let's see, they hatched June 3rd. So they're almost a month old. It's called July 3rd. <laughs> Where's my baby? One of them had five, has Is five toes. Two, three, four. And they're all black. Despite us having multiple color hens, they all ended up black. So that's the update on the chickens. Um, and overall, things are going well this summer. How was your summer break? <laughs> I think he's a little bit bored. Yeah, all right. Well, thanks all for hanging out with me uh, this evening, doing some garden chores. Good to catch up with y'all, and I'll catch you on the next video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel so you can be notified when the next video is uploaded. Take care, everyone. Do something you love today. Bye.